Yes, thank you for staying with us. We're still on the Connects and Conversations in partnership with the Transformative Leadership and Sustainable Development Initiative. Thank you for still staying with us. Mm -hmm. Yes, our next conversation really rallies around um, the Beijing conference. So let's just take some of the core areas that were focused on during that conference, one being women and the economy. Mm -hmm. I'll direct this to you, Chin Wei. Mm -hmm. How far have we come? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I feel like, or no, I feel like we have seen increased um, awareness around improving partic participation of women. Um, just this year alone, we're in March now. Yeah, we're in March. Yeah, we're in just March. this year, we've celebrated at least 15 women being appointed to either an MD role, uh, CEO, director. And um, yeah, like so we've made good strides around that. But I must stress that this is from a very low base. And so in as much as we're seeing a lot of women being celebrated, appointments have been made. I think there was um, the Transcorp um, appointments that were made. There were a significant number of women, and we were all happy about that. That, that was a good thing. Um, but it's from a very low base. And so there's still so much more that needs to be done. And in corporate Nigeria, really policies need to be deliberately put in place within organizations that promote um, the growth of women. Now, policies that would allow for a woman who gets pregnant, gives birth, and is trying to come back. Reintegrate yeah, back Yeah, reintegrate re re back, exactly. We need policies like that, policies that would make it conducive for moms to work in peace at work. So. There are offices that have um, breastfeeding rooms. There are offices that have cre the crash system. So things like that. And then let, let's even move away from, from that and go into encouraging women to be more visible. Mm -hmm. So in meetings, having like a be seen, be heard type of policy. Because we're, we're really intelligent, but for some weird reason, we tend to hold back. Like Dr. Josephine said, Ex we are too hard on ourselves. Exactly. Sometimes. Exactly. So policies that would in encourage that. Apart from that, you have things like mentorship. Mentorship has played, for me personally, a significant role in my own career growth. And I feel like structured mentorship programs need to be put in place in, in, um, across organizations. Also, the, the sponsor approach. So the, the, the role of sponsorship cannot be overemphasized. These are things that I've seen help people grow. And yeah, the whole increasing representation of women, like in my industry, if you look at the pipeline, it's like kwashoko, like at the <laughs> bottom, you see loads of women, this is financial mm -hmm. services. Mm -hmm. But when you tilt your head up, it becomes thin, right? Now, the thing is, the women who are going up need to remember to look down and pull, and pull from the bottom so that we can see this ratio we're trying to, if the 50, 50, whether it's 50, 50, whether it's 60, 40, whether it's 65, 35, whatever, because we're not even close to any of these ratios that I just called. We also need to, as women, not just saying men, 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 do. When you get there, you also need to remember that there are people you left behind mm -hmm. and pull them up. And now for those who are behind or at, at the bottom and they're trying to go up, you need to understand that equipping yourself is important. Nobody is going to speak on behalf of, or is going to push for somebody who is not valuable, or who is not um, competent. competent. So you need to work on yourself if you really want to be pulled up. So yeah, that's. I'll leave it there for now. So Ibija, I know that you. I want you to speak regarding women in power and decision making. What have you seen playing within this um, space, um, particularly in terms of financing? when it comes to women in governance, those who want to run for offices? Look, I think women need to stop being conservative when it comes to speaking about the role of finance and politics. Money is important, full stop. Without money, you cannot run for office in Nigeria. And I'm not talking about vote buying or, you know, corruption, no. You, the, 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 the logistics, you know, involved in election planning, it's very expensive. You're going to have people working for you. And if you don't pay them, you're going to have volunteers, right? But you also need to have your own staff, people that you can delegate to, people that are not just doing it when they want to do it, people that you're giving areas of responsibilities. 
Very important. See, I, I was speaking with um, a lady, Tari Oba Oliver. She ran for um, House of Assembly Lagos State as a non indigene and then, you know, went on to run for the office of the governor and Bayosa as well. And one of the things she said was, look, when a man is running, his friends will rally around to support him from mm. business, from everywhere, like, oh, this is our person, you know. When, it, when a woman is running, she's running in silo. And that's why, you know, that's, I don't know if I said this before or maybe it was just um, off air, but mental, mental health, no one really talks about it. Yes. Mm. A lot of women are so burdened with carrying the responsibility of running alone. They don't have the support network. They don't have the strong, you know, financial might. And then they end up being so exhaust, exhausted after elections. Mm. A lot of people that run into the 19th, speaking with them like, nah, I'm not running again. It shouldn't be that wow. way. You should, we need career politicians as women. The same way Chinwe has a career path, I have my career path. We need women in politics like that. We need women that have been in politics for 10, 20 years. And like you said, in the corporate sector, mm -hmm. when you get out of there, yeah. remember to pull, you know, the, the lady the with, the, with the, 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 the woman leader at the party level so that she can also contest for that office eye of there. I don't really, I mean, I, no, because I'm, I mean, obviously um, on a talk show, I don't really want to be quoted, but I don't really think, I don't really think that uh, the women that are in politics right now have done a lot, you know, to support the upcoming generation. And that's just a fact. People always say, you know, we are our own problems. Women need to support women. It's very important. We need to form a, form a formidable network. And if I can just highlight a bit of what we're doing with Elector, and I mean, it's one, that's one of the reasons why we actually, my, my organization, the Social Chain Network Africa, and Women in Leadership Advancement Network came together to um, establish Elector, you know, which is an end to end solution. It's essentially, like what, you know, 2019, what happened? Why do we have 4.1% 4, 4 representation? Why are women exhausted? Mm -hmm. Why didn't we have a, you know, a lot of women coming out? Why are they saying they're not coming, back, they they're not coming back? You know, and also, mm -hmm. it's, you know, the, the funny thing is, women actually constitute the highest um, voter population in Nigeria. But then you don't have women high up there. I mean, for me, that's just ridiculous. So it means women are not voting for women, or enough women are not coming out. But whatever it is, we need to fix it. And I think coming into 2023, we need to be very deliberate about it. Yeah. We have a lot of intellectually sound women in yeah, the corporate sector. Why the are they not coming out? Of women who should it's not even about offices. that. See, the grey middle class mm. are not interested in politics. I always tell people, you keep complaining about Nigeria, but you know your own problem. Mm -hmm. you, want, you, want, you want government. See, government can't do it all. It is your civic duty and responsibility as a citizen to either vote to run for office or to support someone running for office. But you need to be active. You cannot complain about government being inefficient when you don't go out to vote, when you don't exercise your fundamental right as a citizen, and that you, you expect some level of accountability. Mm -hmm. It's not possible. We need young, we need, we need, we need the, the new wave of, you know, we need the revolution happening in the corporate sector, mm. where you're seeing a lot of younger women, you know, rise, rise yeah, shatter the, the ceiling glass and rise yes, above, you know, yes. going into like, into senior, senior po positions yes. and overseeing like blue chips, comp blue chip company. That's what we need in politics. Mm -hmm. How many of you guys, I mean, so, Chinwe, are you ever going to run for office? <laughs> I probably, probably go for appointment. Okay, I'm, I'm going, going somewhere going with this. CBN. You see, <laughs> and that's important because so when you're there, also you know policies that can actually affect, you know um, affect the lives Influence. of women, and that's very important. So see, you actually have a destination. You're planning. You you're going for something, and that's beautiful. But a lot of women are yeah. like, oh, I'm not interested in politics. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to know. Why would you say that? I think it's I think it's also the way politics is done here. So even those who may have aspirations to to get into mm -hmm. these positions, it's I don't know, it's a bit it's not straightforward and 
Yeah. So you change where I, under, I understand. Mm -hmm. But men won't say that. I mean, mm -hmm. some would tell you that it's a very dirty game and they would rather exactly. not be a part of, you know, mm -hmm. such a game. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Uh, it's going to get dirtier. I mean, if, if, if I was going to chip in a little bit to, mm -hmm. to, to that, I think uh, what women are, and I would, even say, I would even say the women are even uh, more organized because mm -hmm. the challenges the women are facing is similar to what the young people are facing. Absolutely. It's like a double. So if you're young, if you're young and you're not a woman, you now have like double marginalization. Mm -hmm. You can imagine. In trying, in trying to get elected. But the, but the issue is, I think you highlighted something in terms of participation. You, we all are not going to run for office. No, we're not. But we all must participate. Mm -hmm. So you can either, you know... You need to decide you know, what part of the exactly. party. Yeah. 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 Just yeah. find yeah. the place yeah. for yourself. And, and let me say something to, to buttress what you said, you know, and we, which is what I, I always say in any forum in which I'm speaking to uh, mm -hmm. young people, or even women who are running for office, that economic empowerment comes mm -hmm. before political empowerment. Yeah. If you're not economically empowered, you are running, you are a joke, literally. Mm -hmm. And I'm one of those people who, who, who advocates that as much as we need professionals, I mean, we need people who are career politicians. But mm -hmm. I believe that if you're also a politician, you must bring something to the table. Absolutely. So I'm for professionals in politics. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, there must be a value that you've created somewhere that you want to bring to the table. Absolutely. You know, so I think it's important that we buttress that. So men understand these things. And, and I have a, a mentor who always used this particular narrative to say that, the networking required mm. from, from a very young age. A boy is socializing at the age of five mm. with a team of 11, 11 on both sides. Mm. At that point right now, his sister right now is a bit older than him. He's in the kitchen learning how to cook a bar. I, I, I do I'm so not saying that there's anything wrong with that. But the, but the networking, exactly. So that mm -hmm. networking right now is already impaired from the get-go. Yeah. At five, he has at, at least 21 friends. True. So we don't so have, the, the, in the, terms of um, proper positioning yeah. and proper conditions for women to I'm not saying it, it's, it's like a and so people already are they, are, are they have a head start yeah in terms of the network and it, it, not even in politics even in career it is network that gets you placed absolutely it's having having yeah, knowledge the technical, or having the technical skills would get you to a particular place but mm -hmm. your soft skills that's what we're absolutely here. absolutely yeah. so so these are serious conversations we need to mm. touch upon so i mean mm. it's interesting to see what elector is doing mm -hmm. in terms of mobilizing resources because it's yeah. huge it's such a major i mean how much does it even cost to buy a form let's start from there mm. you know we're not playing i think it cost uh, maybe apc the president maybe 25 mm -hmm. million almost million. 50 million now hmm. to isn't buy, that to already buy, it's why that, that's like a that's like double economic and that's, and that's why see that's why you need a strong network mm. that's why you need an army right Electa, so we're trying to raise ten million dollars to fund. I mean, to support one thousand women. But then you're still going to handpick, you know, women that will run for those yeah. particular offices. So you're looking at presidency, you know, um, um, running as um, a state governor, House of Representative, House of Assembly, senator. Because we need more women that's able to affect policy. It's very strategic. And when I said ten million, someone like oh, that's a lot of money. I said no. When you break it down, it is nothing. But this is our beat. Imagine if. 10 different or 20 different organizations actually say, okay, you know what, let's see how we can support. You bring in finance, let's bring, you know, human capital, let's bring this. Then that would be, that, that would be very, see. But do you see a point in Nigeria where the cost of going, uh, you know, going into political positions or running for office wouldn't be as expensive as it currently is? That's a conversation for another day. Yes, I, I think that's a separate <laughs> yes, conversation. that's a separate conversation. <laughs> I think it's important to look at now. And that's the problem. See, that's one of the problems in Nigeria. Like, oh, so, so um, I hope it's going to come down someday. Maybe when it comes, I'm going to run. No. The reality right now, expansion, um, elections are very expensive. So what do we do to navigate that barrier? Mm -hmm. And how can we get ourselves to get women to, 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 to run for office, you know, um, competi um, competitively as, as the men will do? Mm -hmm. And not just relegate them to, you know, um, vulnerabilities and 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 uh, the barriers that actually come with running for office, the horrific stories that came out of the 2019 elections. You don't want to hear them, just because women, you know, a lot of women didn't have access to finance. You're talking about rape. You're talking about sexual harassment at the party level. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do with Electa, we need to de-risk the process of running Absolutely. for office. For office. When a woman is empowered, she's enabled. She can then sit at that table, look you in the eyes, stand face, it's you know, stand head to head to you and, you know, compete with you. Mm. But when you've already mentally, mentally, she's unstable mm. because she sees herself as a sex slave to you or mm -hmm. she, feels, she, she, feels, uh, she feels very inferior to you because she's demanding right. that then you have a problem with that we need to we need to um take yes. a break now but thank you so much for the conversation so thank far you. all right we'll take a quick break when we return we'll be discussing women rights in nigeria